Welcome back to another episode of Hobby Adventures. Today, we are going to do a main mashup. Uh, that's going to be pretty much a whole bunch of stuff that's going on. So for now, roll those credits. It's gonna be a mashup. It's gonna be a whole bunch of stuff. I got my phone to make sure that I know what I am saying and be on track. No pun intended. You guys probably noticed in the intro that picture that came up. NS Modeler Tim is now a proud member of the Model Railway YouTube community group. This is an awesome Facebook page you guys, everyone should check out. So I am gonna leave a link down below in the comments and go ahead, check it out after this video, and trust me, you will like it, subscribe to it, follow it, and have fun with it. A couple of you guys asked in my last video, how did I get my camera on my train, on my N-scale train, to take the, the tour around my layout? Well, here, let me show you how it looks. All right, this is the camera that I used. Sony Mini Action Cam. This thing's super small, and uh, yeah, I use this quite a bit for a lot of things. All right, so you guys remember this train over here. You remember these cars right here? So what I did was, as you can see, the first car is empty, this first well car. And what's really cool is that this actually fits perfectly inside. That's how I filmed the tour of the layout, so it's like pretty cool. <laughs> One of the things that happened quite a while ago was um, my oldest daughter, Mika, she was having fun running the trains and she wanted to try out switching. So I was like, nah, no problem, right? So my daughter wanted to run this uh, Rapido CN GMD-1. It was a good call because this is a switcher. So, so she was trying it out. Uh, she ran the train a little too hard, trying to couple up the, to the cars and she broke the coupler. So that's all right. I ended up calling Rapido, told them what happened really cool about it. They ended up sending me a email back saying that that was actually pretty prototypical and that actually happens in the real real world, which I started laughing when I wrote that. Rapido, they were so cool about it. Check that out. Huge thing for just one little coupler, but awesome, awesome, awesome company. They were like to send out a coupler for my GMD-1. All right, so let's open it up and let's see what we got. So here is uh, red flashing. I ended up getting 10 of these. There you go. Might be a little fast, but that's okay. Next up is 0603 LED whites. These ones came with capacitors, uh, 1K capacitors. So that's really cool. The uh, reason why I got these ones is actually on one of my HO scale trains, my Genesis. Oh, wow, I totally forgot the model. Anyways, one of my CN trains. The, one of the ditch lights burnt out, and uh, I'm going to replace it. It's super bright. It's really nice. So I ended up getting 10 of those. And just for you guys out there, if you want to see how small, like, these little LEDs are, check this out. This is my thumb. See how close I can get. They're super small, man. Next is up are the two aspect signal. Uh, these ones are already soldered with the capacitors, as you can see. Not a bad looking thing. So it's uh, green over red. I know it looks a bit orange, but uh, it's red. And there is the green. Little tiny guy, I like it. All right, next up is uh, three aspect signals. You know what, they look good. Can be repainted a little bit, you know, like, um, down here the pole you can paint it gray so but i'm gonna leave it black it looks nice there you go look at that some pretty good detailing on it and then one of the things is really uh i guess it's only because of the size when the lights turn on there's a little bit of bleed on the back side you can go ahead you can cover that up i'm not going to because some of the parts of the layout You'll probably only see like the you'll only see like the back side of the of the signal, but with the light bleed, you'll be able to know um, what the signal is saying. May not be prototypical, but it'll make my life a lot easier. Super cool. Super excited to get this onto the layout. 
really nice looking lamp posts. Uh, let's take a closer look. Uh, you're gonna see one of them actually, or you know, two of them. The, the lids come off easy only because they're not glued. They're just snugly tight. So that can go right on, no problem. So this is a warm yellow or warm white uh, light. I think this is more for an HO scale, only for the fact that these lights, the lamps are a little big, but it's okay because if I do a park or something that's more in the background, more in the background instead of the foreground, I think it'll look okay. But I like them, it's real nice. So on the right, you see my MacBook Pro with Model Railway YouTube Community Group right there. <laughs> Plug in, and then on the left you see a very, very, very old PC computer. I had to do some maintenance on this thing. I actually reformatted the hard drive, reinstalled Windows XP. Did this specifically so that I can run my ESU lock programmer. For all you Mac users that have a lock programmer, you know that we cannot run that program on a Mac. You can by partitioning the hard drive, installing Windows, that can cause a lot of problems with our MacBooks, only for the fact that there is a lot of viruses for PC, not so much for Apple computers, but more so for PCs. And uh, the last thing you wanna do is get a virus on your MacBook or on your Apple computer. Now, for all you ESU guys out there, if you do have a Mac computer, I did open up a topic window on the ESU website. Pretty much what I'm doing is I'm trying to make ESU aware that there are a lot of Mac users that have this program uh, and this program is amazing and it would be nice if we can get a Mac version of the program. Anyway, so if you guys would do that, that'd be awesome. Go to the ESU website, look up for the forums and just look up for Mac using Lock Programmer. Over here, I was, I reformatted the computer, was able to download the, the lock programmer. As you can see, it works. So happy with it, so happy with it. All right, so enough of that one. The other thing that I've been doing with the Mac is this. And this is all thanks to one guy, Steve Bonneville. Yeah, go check him out. I'm gonna throw up a link over, over here or you can check out in the description below. I'll show you what he got me into. I'm blaming you for giving me extra work. <laughs> Anyways, and uh, let's get a closer look here. The thing that I've been uh, doing over here on the computer is uh, Arcadia Loco roster. This here I decided to do after Steve sent me what he did to keep uh, track of his stuff. So let's go ahead and check out, see what I did. This is the Arcadia Loco motive roster. As you can see over here, this is manufacturers, starting off with Atlas, Bachman, Fox Valley Models, Genesis, Cato, Micro Ace, Rapido, and Lima. And then we also have uh, N scale, the scale that it's in, the model names, uh, road numbers, purchased, price all the way down here you even have a subtotal of everything uh, going on with dcc or dc decoder of manufacturers if the trains have any um decoders I'm going from digitrax soundtracks bachman and so forth and then for the decoder dcc decoder and number of decoders I'll uh, give you an example would be right around, oh, there it is. Okay, DZ126IN, and it's times two, and that's uh, for the TGV. They actually had to use two decoders. So something that's really cool that I did was uh, rating. So these are Arcadia ratings or my ratings of each train. Uh, see, two stars, five stars. To give an example, the two stars here is the N-Scale DD40AX by Bachman. Now, this one is like just a regular... Uh, regular one. Uh, this is the one that's more of a better line from Bachman. As you can see, this one here has a soundtracks decoder. All right, another thing that I've been doing here with numbers is uh, setting up a spreadsheet for 
recording the values, the CV values that I'm using for speed matching. Here you can see it's a UP Heritage SD70 Ace number 1982 using a Digitrax SDXN146 K1E decoder. Oh my goodness. Okay, in this column over here, uh, it's just the headlines for minimum speed, acceleration, braking, max speed, mid speed, uh, motor curve, tables, and blah, 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 blah. Now another thing that I did was I ran the trains through the speedometer a tester that I have at factory settings and 303 kilometers an hour so fast so fast right out of the box I am so surprised that the fact that out of the box these trains are running so quick I know that a couple of you guys out there asked uh, or were wondering um, what the factory speed was so what I've been learning is on how to live stream and what programs I need to use to live stream uh, that's been sort of what's been going around here on YouTube is live streaming all right so the program that I'm gonna be using for live streaming is OBS now guys if you are getting into live streaming this is a pretty good program to use as well as if you're getting into making videos for YouTube OBS, you can actually edit videos with OBS, which is really cool. And the best part is, it is free. Oh yeah, can't go wrong with that one. Now, another tool that I'm going to be using here for live streaming is Epic Cam Viewer Pro. This one here, the download version onto your computer is free, but for the iPhone, you're going to have to pay for that. Oh, and there you go. Look, OBS. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Yeah, I know what I'm saying right now is something totally different than what's going on on the OBS program, but I forgot to go ahead and record with the volume. So over here, you can see that there is some, some stuff. This is a powerful program to be used. Uh, this right now, it's actually using my computer's webcam and uh, works pretty good though. I'm st still learning the program. Um, again, there is a lot to learn and I just want to make sure that I am very familiar with this program before I go ahead and start doing a live view broadcast. All right, so the other tool that I'm going to be that I'm going to be using is this Epic Cam Viewer Pro. This is the free download for the computer, but for your iPhone or even for your Android phone, you're going to have to pay for it, but it's really cool. So we click on it and uh, it, it uses your network to do wireless which is really cool. And there we go. Look, slide. I'm just, hi. <laughs> uh, what I'm doing over here is uh, live streaming through my phone. What it does essentially is it turns your phone into a wireless web camera, which is really cool. So one of the beneficial things about this is what I can do is I can use my webcam to talk to you guys. And then I can also use my phone to be overseeing my layout. And then as I'm, ta as I'm doing live streaming with you guys with OBS, I can actually go back and forth with the cameras so that way you're not always looking at my ugly mug. So and the really cool part is that it shoots in 1280 by 720 which essentially is 720p high definition. Now there is a free version of it with the watermark that's down here in the right hand corner. Uh, what I think it is I do believe hold on let me just double check I think it's um 680 by something anyways it's really low resolution and then if my memory serves me correct i think it's in black and white but that is the free version of it yeah that is it for the rest of this episode hope you guys enjoyed it guys just remember keep on modeling till next time